Can I go live as soon as I get everyone in their seats? Thank you all for your patience. We were trying to figure out, we are required to stream, and we were trying to figure out what our next best alternative was. If we weren't able to stream, we were going to record and then keep a record that we had done our best. But anyway, it looks like we're going to be able to go live. So am I OK to call us to order? Not yet. OK, hang on. We're getting closer. In case you didn't see it, he did like this. So. Sorry to do that, but I want to get the, I want to get the band covered before. Any word, Dane? So Troy, just FYI, they're, they're, they're connected, but they're still not live streaming. For some reason, we've got a technical problem. They're going to start recording as soon as I call us to order. You're OK with that. And we're going to just post that we had a technical difficulty, and this will be available after the, uh, after the meeting. All right, sorry for, to everyone for this delay. Um, are you all ready for me to call us to order? All right, I will call us to order. I'm calling to order the Board of Trustees of Tennessee Tech University. Uh, Mr. Ray, will you will you please call the roll? Trustee Doris. Here. Trustee Lowry. Here. Trustee Luna. Here. Trustee Lynn. Here. Trustee Rose. Here. Trustee Seitz. Here. Trustee Wilmore. Here. Trustee Harper. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you so much, and thanks to all of you for being here, and I'm sorry again for the delay. We're, if you're watching this on a recording, we're sorry that you had to watch it on a recording and not live. Uh, we had a technical difficulty. Uh, the first order of business is I want to thank the Brass Arts Quintet who played for us uh, over lunch, and they're going to play one more song for us, but I want to tell you about them before we have them play one more song. The Brass Arts Quintet is from the College of Fine Arts, and they're being recognized for their 60th anniversary as a faculty brass quintet. Now, I look at all of you, and I don't think all of you all have been playing for 60 years. Is that correct? OK, good. Just making sure. I want to get the facts straight. You look very young to have been playing for 60 years. But we're thought, this is thought to be the longest continually running university brass quintet in the United States. Very, very exciting to have you all here today. During our lunch break, the quintet performed Bouncing Brass by Chris McCormick, who is one of the musicians. So will you raise your hand if you're Chris? There you are. Uh, Take the A-Train by Duke Ellington, who is not part of our quintet, but it was arranged by Chris McCormick. 
And the members of the Brass Arts Quintet are Scott Haggerty and Chris McCormick on trumpets, Justin Stanley on horn, Joshua Hauser on trombone and euphonium, and Preston Light on tuba. And we are very, very happy you're here. They're going to perform one more song for us, and we're looking forward to hearing that. This one is from this one is uh, by Joshua Hauser, one of the members here, and the and the the song is called Road Rage. So we're interested to hear that. That was outstanding. Do, does anyone on the board have any comments or questions for the Brass Arts Quintet? I like a little road rage after dinner. After yeah. That's good. 
So I guess that was horns honking. Is that what that was in the middle there? That was sort of, yeah, good. I figured it out. I was afraid to guess, but that was amazing. Thank you. And by the way, I tried to play French horn for three years in junior high and could never find middle C even, so I was really bad. But I thank you all for doing that because you are amazing. And we're on a music theme today. Our student recognition is uh, if you students and, and uh, folks want to come up uh, to, the, to the podium, please, we're going to recognize some students from the marching band. And we had a function at the president's home last night, and as we came by, the marching band was in formation and playing, and wow, was that ever fun to see you guys and to hear you practicing. That was seemed amazing, and the band is enormous now. So let me, um, let me give you a little bit of information about this before these smart folks start talking. The Golden Eagle Marching Band this fall will be the largest in tech history with 211 members from 32 different undergraduate majors. 32 majors, that's amazing. And our color guard has returned. I understand we didn't have a color guard for a while. We've returned the color guard, that's great. These four students are gonna talk about their perspective of how the band is an important part of their tech experience and how it helped to recruit them. And we had hoped to have one in a uniform, but our uniforms didn't come yet. But we'll be looking forward to seeing the new uniforms. And thank you all for being here. Why not, let me, let me go ahead and, well, let me let you introduce yourselves, but I know we have Abby, Emily, Chloe, and Walker. And so why don't you all introduce yourselves, tell where you're from and what your major is and what your role is in the band. So start with Abby. Uh, you'll have to push the button and a green light will come on. Good. Awesome. Hello, my name is Abby Lane and I am a senior music education major and I currently serve as drum major of the marching band. So were you the one I saw out there yesterday doing this thing or not? Most likely, yes. yes. <laughs> and where are you from, Abby? Oh, yes. I'm from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. We're always happy when somebody from Middle Tennessee State comes this direction, or Murphy. <laughs> of course. Uh, hi, my name is Emily Castillo. I'm also a senior music education major. Um, I am a black jacket, which is an undergraduate uh, assistant position. Uh, we help behind the scenes of the marching band. So, and I'm from Winchester, Tennessee. Excellent. My name is Chloe Johnson. I'm also a senior music education major. I'm also a black jacket with Emily, and I'm from Sparta, Tennessee. Hi, I'm Walker Andrews. I'm a sophomore music education major, and I'm the mellophone section leader in the marching band. And I'm from Columbia, Tennessee. Excellent. So tell us about what brought you to tech and how the band has impacted that. Alright, so what brought me to tech was the amazing faculty in this music um, school that we have here and um, it was, it was, they're really good. I got to like do some lessons with them and meet them over time and this is the school I fell in love with. I love every single professor that we have here and then also getting to be a part of the marching band was really cool. My first year was 2020, so marching band kind of had to take a step back, but joining that sophomore year and then junior and senior year has been so much fun and watching it grow. So, yes. Um, I am also, I have been in the marching band since 2019 actually, so I got to have a year before COVID. Um, but everything is amazing. I really enjoy the music program here. That's what brought me here. My high school band director was a tech alum, and so he brought us here all the time. And I was like, I knew from the beginning, this is where I want to be. This, is, this music program has been flourishing ever since, and I'm super thankful that I got the opportunity to, to stick around. <laughs> Like I said earlier, I'm from Sparta, so this is really local and it was really nice. And I took a lot of lessons from students and faculty here, and it was really nice. To, it feels like home to me, because even coming to Cookville, even though Sparta's just right down the road, Cookville has become my home. And it was great to actually like come here and be at Tech. So what drew me to Tech was the variety of ensembles that we have here to offer, uh, especially the Bryan Symphony, being able to perform in 
uh, professional level orchestr orchestral music with professors and getting that huge learning experience is gonna be really helpful, hopefully for my career. Uh, last year was my first year in the marching band and I loved every second of it. It's an incredible opportunity to make uh, hopefully lifelong friends and to just feel the electric that you feel when you perform in front of a crowd. Wow, do you all have questions for these young folks? Did you look? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. Did you review any other college music programs? Did you, do we compare? How do we compare better than others? Why did you choose us? I know you didn't like the professors and everything, but what others? Um, part of the reason I chose tech, I was looking at MTSU and I was looking at UT as well, and I looked at the the course structure and everything and. Tennessee Tech, for my degree, music ed, provides like a whole year's worth of residency, basically student teaching in the classroom, whereas other universities have you observe teachers the first semester of your senior year and then go into residency your second semester. So I felt like I would be better prepared coming to this university for the degree that I chose. Another thing about the faculty in the environment, I love the environment. And a lot of the other bigger schools, it doesn't feel like at home. And I visited a lot of other campuses and I didn't like it, but the faculty make it so personable and they care so much about us and that's why it's really important. Yeah, I was just gonna say, one, I love that you said you feel like you're at home here. And then I also love that you said that the electricity you feel in performing, but that you should realize that we all feel that electricity when you're performing as well. Just a question, I realize all of you, most of you are, are in, mu in the music field, but there's 32 different majors in the band. That's, that's quite remarkable. I'm just curious what that experience is like for some of your peers who are maybe not in the music, uh, maybe not, are not majoring in music, but, but participate in band. Um, my sister actually goes here. She is an upcoming, or she's a freshman uh, sociology major, and she's in the flute section. Um, she's, I kind of forced her to be in band, but it was, it, she likes it. She loves it a lot. Um, she gets to spend time, you know, with music, doing something fun, you know, stepping out of the typical, you know, gen ed classes, you know, the sociology classes, taking a step back and going to um, the music where she can feel free, feel that, that sense of, um, family friendly, you know, community as an ensemble, so. Several of us played sports here and we understand the commitment level required outside of academics. I'm curious what y'all's commitment level is, how much practice and, because, yeah, share that a little bit. So our marching band practices three days a week from four to six, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And a lot of us also practice outside of that time to get better at our, our music um, because if you notice, like we don't have our music out on the field with us, so we have to memorize it and stuff. So we spend a lot of time in the fine arts building um, practicing non-majors and majors alike. Um, so a lot of us probably practice at least 30 minutes to an hour a day um, in addition to those times um, on the field altogether. So you don't have those little stands that hold the music and you're doing that from memory? Yes. And marching awesome. in formation. Yes. Too many moving parts for this girl. <laughs> yes. Wow. Lots, of th lots of thinking. <laughs> so how do you decide to pick Elvis music this time around? <laughs> how did it get decided? Well, you all performed at halftime. You played C.C. Ryder and... Else. That is that is Dr. Miller's decision, <laughs> whether he wants to, whatever oh, okay. he wants to do. <laughs> well, that's great. Somebody needs to sing it. Maybe you can sing when they do. <laughs> so I'm curious. Uh, I think all four of you said you were music education majors. Uh, what are your career goals? Are you hoping to go to high school as a band director or go on to higher education? What are your career goals? Yeah, so um, after graduating in May, I hope to find a band directing position either at a high school or a middle school. Um, high school is a big draw for me because I don't want to give up marching band completely. So high school is what I would like to do first. So once I receive my degree, it, it's, I'm going to be certified for K-12. So I have 
a very large, you know, I could go to elementary school, I could go to a middle school, high school, uh, but I, what I want to do is middle school, middle school band director. I'm kind of all over the place. I've changed my mind the more experience that I get with students, but honestly, I would be happy teaching any grade level. I have the same K through 12, it doesn't matter to me. I'd really like to, once I graduate, I'd like to go to a unit school and teach uh, like K through 12 entirely or a high school. Yeah, yeah I, just, I just wanna say uh, how awesome you guys are and the band. Uh, Carrie and I get the opportunity to listen to you while you're practicing on the field, and we love every minute of it. I got to say something to Dr. Miller earlier, but the uh, the energy and enthusiasm that you bring to to ball games in that environment is tremendous. I thought the halftime show was fantastic, uh, but I just I just want to say how much I personally appreciate the, the work you put in. But I think I would. I can speak honestly on behalf of the whole campus. We're very proud of you, and, and congratulations on such a great job. Well done. We, we never cease to be amazed at how smart our students are and how amazing they are. And so thank you all so much for taking your time out today. Thanks again to the Brass Arts Quintet who came and performed for us. Thank you for the commitment that it takes to do three days a week of practice and then to be here on Saturdays. And you all are doing something very important for the whole school, and we appreciate that a lot. Thank you again. I'm going to take a prerogative here and move a couple of things around on the agenda. We are going to go ahead and do the minutes, but then I'm going to ask the student trustee and the president to postpone their remarks to the end of the meeting because we have at least one trustee who's got to leave at 2.30, and I want to be sure we get all our votes in before then. So, uh, But we will get all of that done before the meeting is over today. So I will... Um, entertain a motion with respect to the minutes of the June 22nd, 2023 board meeting. I move we adopt the minutes as presented. Thank you, Mr. Stites. Is there a second? Second. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Lowry. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll take a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? I believe that was unanimous. I have a couple of orders of business that I need to cover that um, I need the full board here, or the, the majority of the board here for. So let me cover the first one, uh, which is the certification of the president's responsibilities related to athletics. And you know I do this every, or the chairman does this every year, so let me just report to you that the Ohio Valley Conference requires the chair of the board to attest that the president, President Oldham, is responsible for the administration of the athletics program, that he has the support of the board in operating a program of integrity, and he may vote on behalf of the institution on NCAA and OVC matters. The chair's attestation must also be presented to the board. So I have just presented that to you. I will attest to that, and that will be sent to the NCAA and OVC, I believe. Is that right, Diane? Okay, thank you. Anybody have any questions about that? Concerns? Thank you. Okay, then secondly, we have a, uh, we have a matter of business to come before the board that did not come from a committee, so I will ask you to note that we didn't cover this this morning. Um, the president requests approval of our mission statement as presented. Uh, for the purposes of meeting certain regulatory and statutory requirements, the mission statement, which is included in the strategic plan, has been extracted as a standalone document for approval. And you have that in your materials. On June 26, 2018, the board delegated authority on a continuing basis to the president to make technical changes to the mission profile and to submit the mission profile and the mission statement annually to the, T to the Tennessee Higher Education Commission. SAC COC standard 4.2A requires that the governing board ensure the regular review of the institution's mission. And so I would entertain a motion with respect to the mission statement as it's presented in diligent. 
And do we need to pull that up on the screen? Can we pull that up on the screen? Do you know if we can pull that? Okay, well, you can see it on diligent, of course, so. I'd entertain a motion. I move that the board approve the mission statement as presented. Thank you, Mr. Lowry. Is there a second? Second. Was that Mr. Lynn? Thank you. Is there any discussion? This is, by the way, I should have said this already. This is the same mission statement we've had since the beginning of the board, but I, I should have mentioned that to begin with, but this has not changed. We're just recertifying. Hearing any other discussion? If not, we'll take a roll call vote. Trustee Lowry. Aye. Trustee Luna. Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Stites. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Now we have the consent agenda in front of us, which are those, uh, these are items that we discussed this morning in committee meetings, and we voted, uh, the committees voted this morning to put these on the consent agenda. Those are the tenure upon appointment recommendations and policy 217 regarding student academic misconduct. These have been placed on the consent agenda by recommendation of the morning's committee meetings. I'd entertain a motion with respect to the consent agenda. Madam Chairman, I move uh, to pass the consent agenda as presented. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Stites. That was Ms. Rose and then Mr. Stites. Thank you both. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Trustee Lowry. Aye. Trustee Luna. Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Stites. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. We'll now have the um, executive committee report, which will be given by Ms. Rose. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, we had a great discussion this morning and uh, a really good uh, turnout for board uh, participation and faculty participation and cabinet participation in the in the president's evaluation and. Uh, I now move that the board approve the president to receive a 4% raise for his performance during the 2023 fiscal year and that that be that raise be retroactive to July 1, 2023. Thank you, Ms. Rose. And since that recommendation comes from a committee, we don't need a second. Is there any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, I will ask for a roll call vote, please. Trustee Lowry. Aye. Trustee Luna. Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Stites. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. And now, Mr. Stites, if you'll give the Audit and Business Committee report. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, we had a lengthy discussion in our committee about the audit and all this aspects of that and we um, on the committee's recommendation uh, I'd like to get approval for the 2023-24 disclosed projects for the baseball hitting and pitching facility and the head house greenhouse renovation thank you that was a motion so, uh, so thank you for that motion and we don't need a second is there any discussion on this motion we did have quite a bit of discussion about this this morning. Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Trustee Lowry. Aye. Trustee Luna. Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Stites. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you all very much. And Mr. Secretary, I hope I'm doing the right thing if I go now to the student trustee report. Is that correct? All right, Ms. Doris, would you like to give us your first report? And by the way, I should have said, come on up, and I'll be welcoming you while you're coming up. I, I welcomed Dr. Luna and Ms. Doris this morning at our executive committee, but I should have welcomed you officially to the board. We're delighted that you're both part of this, and you've already made, both of you have made significant contributions already today. So glad to have you with us. 
Thank you so much. Um, I'm super excited to have a couple of moments to speak with everyone today about what campus life has looked like since the beginning of the semester. But before I dive into my report, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, although I wasn't able to attend the June meeting, I'm so thankful to have been appointed and welcome to serve on the Board of Trustees. I have tremendous excitement about what lies ahead for my term of service, and I'm grateful to have the opportunity to work with the board to make this university a better place. So the past couple of months have been filled with welcoming new students to campus and fueling the growth and development of current students. Students are beginning to engage in campus activities and opportunities more actively. Over my four years at Tech, I have seen student engagement levels fluctuate heavily, primarily due to the COVID-19. Now students are adjusting back to normalcy, which has led to more students attending campus events, joining student organizations, and having a more positive outlook on the college experience as a whole. Students who engage with the campus community are statistically more likely to graduate and maintain higher GPAs than their peers. To encourage student success, it is vital that we continue to foster these levels of student engagement through supporting student organizations and their activities. As our student population continues to grow, our student organizations will also continue to grow. However, student organization growth is being hindered by one major issue, which is the need for more space to host meetings and events. While the Center for Student Engagement works tirelessly to assist student organizations with their space needs, only so many areas on campus exist for student organizations to rent and use for their purposes. Student organizations are excited about the potential of the new Student Event Center, which would provide much needed resources that organizations need to be successful. Aside from student engagement and student organizations, students are also working to navigate some other issues on campus. The current pedestrian walkway construction project on Peachtree Avenue is causing students to reroute their daily paths to classes. This issue is probably the most significant student complaint on campus as it adds up to 10 minutes of walking commute time for students to get to their academic buildings each day. Um, however, the Office of Parking and Transportation regularly, regularly updates students on this construction and how it may alter their commute, which students are grateful for and can adjust accordingly. Students are excited about the walkway project, but they are frustrated with the lack of accessibility to their academic buildings. Another adjustment students are having to make this semester is having more classes in Foundation Hall. Over the past few years, Foundation Hall has primarily been used as overflow space, resulting in few students having to frequent the building. Uh, due to the renovation of Johnson Hall, more students are visiting Foundation Hall than ever before. The College of Business has successfully relocated all of their office and most of their classes to this building. And at the beginning of the semester, students truly kind of feared having to visit this building. Um, it was in some dire need of repairs and improvements, but many students are now impressed with how modern Foundation Hall looks and their fr frustrations with frequenting this area of campus are beginning to subside. Students still need more resources in Foundation Hall, including, including dining options, electrical outlet access, and further repairs. But overall, students are thankful for the work that facilities, the College of Business, and Tennessee Tech did to this building over the summer to make it a space conducive to student learning and success. If you haven't had the chance to stop by the new and improved Foundation Hall, I encourage you to stop by before you leave campus today. It's, it's really different from the last time you probably saw it. Um, with student success being at the forefront of our minds today, I would like to take a moment to highlight the great work that was recently accomplished by Tennessee Tech's Center for Career Development. Last week, Tennessee Tech hosted their annual Employer Expo Job and Internship Fair, and with 180 employers present, this was the most highly attended career fair ever at Tennessee Tech. And I spoke to many students who attended, and they were thrilled by the many opportunities available for all majors at the fair, I also participated in the fair myself, and I was highly impressed by the caliber of employers and students present. Our students are ready to pursue the next level, level of opportunities, and employers are ready to hire our students and graduates. Overall, the spirit of learning and camaraderie is alive and well at Tennessee, on Tennessee Tech's campus. While student needs do exist, our students are excited to be Golden Eagles, and they are confident in their decisions to attend Tennessee Tech. I spoke with a freshman student a few days ago, and their words were, I can't imagine feeling this kind of support anywhere else. Thank you for all you do to provide support and positive experiences for students at Tennessee Tech. And if you all have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them at this time. I'm trying to imagine being a college student and having that kind of composure. <laughs> that was amazing, Addison. What a great report. You made me puddle up talking about the freshmen. Anybody have questions or comments for Addison besides that was a wow? 
Well, thank you. Thank you for your honesty and for being balanced in both your your uh, frustrations and your and your your compliments as well. Thank you. We that's what we want to hear. All right. Well, thank you very much. And Dr. Oldham, I think it's your turn. And this time you're kind of the getting the last word. I, I, I used to have an old saying that the woman gets the last word in an argument. Anything a man says after that's the start of a new argument. So, Well, good afternoon, everyone. And as always, thank you for your time and energy and what you bring to this campus. Your insight and your counsel is always appreciated. And uh, the discussions all, all throughout the day have been very meaningful and beneficial. So thank you. I know that's no small feat for many of you to get here and, and participate like this, so we appreciate it greatly. And I'm just reminded again, following uh, uh, Trustee Doris, that you really don't need me <laughs> uh, when you got when you got trustees like this and students like this. So um, she actually uh, hit on a lot of themes that I'll be discussing as well with you briefly. Uh, but getting it from a student's perspective, I think it, it means a whole lot more to all of you, it actually means more to, to me than uh, me saying most of this. So first of all, let me just say that, uh, you know, we talk a lot about, and we put it on billboards even, that students first, uh, and it's personal. Uh, I can tell you, and you've seen this already, you, you saw it reflected in Addison's report and the students that you've spoken to and the faculty that you've uh, interacted with, uh, it's working. It, it is working on this campus uh, in, a, in a very intimate way. Uh, students do come first. Now, we're not perfect, no institution is, but the, the way that this has been integrated really throughout the campus is remarkable. Uh, and we really do try to live this each and every day and where we fall short, we, we learn from our mistakes and we continue to get better. So that's the thing I'm most proud of, I think, in my report today. Uh, as reported earlier this morning, uh, we are at a, a three-year record for enrollment at 10,117 students. That's up about 2.2 percent uh, over the previous year. And so I think that's another indication of, uh, of the fact that these things are working. Uh, Addison pointed this out. Here's a picture. I think a picture tells you an even better story about the career fair that occurred on campus last week. Uh, you know, th this, this is what it's all about. You know, we, we, we do a lot of things and we, uh, a, a lot goes into getting to this particular point, but ultimately it's about student success. And in this case, uh, as Addison said, over 180 companies uh, came for our career fair, uh, some roughly 1,600 students participated. And if you look closely at the photo, you'll see that the students are the ones that are dressed up, right, right, Addison? <laughs> so uh, they looked great. Uh, they uh, performed extremely well. And the fact that you have so many companies uh, going out of their way to come here to campus to interview our students tells you that our, our graduates are in great demand. And so the things that we are doing here continue to work, and we're incredibly proud of that. Uh, college rankings is not something I spend a lot of time worrying about and thinking about, but I think it, this is, this is uh, informational for the board and, and I think uh, beneficial to know. Um, you, you can take issue, I think, here and there with uh, rankings, because there's a lot of different rankings. Uh, we'll talk about three of them here, Forbes, U.S. News and World Report, and uh, Best Value from Smart Asset. Um, but, uh, and, and whatever your view about these things are, in this particular case, uh, I think they got it pretty right. Uh, they, they, I think these are pretty accurate assessments on where we are in the marketplace of higher education, and we fare pretty well. So Forbes, uh, in their America's Top Colleges, they ranked 500 uh, nationwide, and we're one of only two public universities in the state of Tennessee that are ranked in, by Forbes. U.S. News and World Report, which is probably the best known, their best colleges ranking every year. They, they uh, evaluate some 1,600 uh, campuses around the country. Again, Tech ranked as number two public university in Tennessee, and in the top five, actually top four, for public and private universities in the state. 
uh, and also uh, th this one tech named uh, A plus school for B students. I, I, that one confuses me a little bit. I don't think our students are B students. I think our, our students are A plus students. So, uh, but I think it, it also indicates that this it's a great value institution. Uh, and you know, we do not have an elitist kind of approach to education. Uh, our education is for, for any and all, and we're proud of, very proud of that. Uh, and then named best value college, smart asset. You know, we continue to have the, uh, uh, the best affordability rankings, actually. You know, our students, our graduates still have the highest career uh, starting salaries uh, on graduation, and they have the lowest debt. Actually, the student debt came down this year. Uh, uh, about half of our graduates finished debt-free, and the average debt is right around $15,000. So it's, it's incredibly affordable. Uh, this, sort of, this slide sort of gives you a, a breakdown of the scores and the rankings within the state, uh, reflective of, of what I've already indicated. But uh, you can see we're, we're, we're rated very well, and, I, and uh, the, the thing that we've got to do is somehow uh, become better known. Uh, I think we're still a little too uh, humble about uh, ourselves and, and what we bring to the state of Tennessee. And so uh, through marketing and through word of mouth, quite honestly, uh, you know, being able to uh, toot our own horn maybe a little bit more is going to be really important in the future. Um, some que we've talked some this morning about research, and uh, I know some of you occasionally have questions about, okay, what's the role of research uh, at Tennessee Tech? Uh, we're certainly known as a great teaching institution, and, and so what does that mean to do research? Well, I, I would summarize it this way in terms of role and importance of research, particularly here at Tennessee Tech. I, I, I firmly believe that great universities do two things really well. They first create and disseminate knowledge. And it's not just about, you know, uh, teaching students something you learned yourself 20 years ago in, uh, while you were in school, but it's actually on the creative side. You know, students are actually learning from active practitioners in the discipline. Uh, that's, that is incredibly important. One, it keeps the, the knowledge fresh. It keeps the curriculum fresh. Uh, and, but more importantly, it, it tells how relevant it is. Students need to know the context for what they're learning uh, every bit as much, maybe more so than the content. Content, they can largely, they're smart students, they can get content on their own, but often they don't know why. What, what, what's the why behind what they're learning? And that's what uh, active faculty that are participating in research help bring to the classroom in a very significant way. The other thing that great universities do, and it's incredibly important, and we do it really well here at Tennessee Tech, and that's identify and develop talent. Uh, it's that learning process where students have a chance to be mentored and, and uh, and taught really in a very personal way by faculty members who care uh, and can help sort of shepherd them into career opportunities and, and many times just give the encouragement that they need. A lot of times students have the potential, have the ability, they just don't really know that they have that ability. And so when a faculty member goes out of their way to identify a student and say, hey, I think you can do this, or I think you, you could be really good at something, uh, it goes a long way. And that's what really great universities do. And, and there's no better way, in my view, to do that than through the creative research and, and scholarly activities. Uh, some of you come from uh, careers where you're familiar with apprenticeship programs, uh, it, it's not all that different from that. You're, you're, you're actively learning in an environment uh, by doing. You're not just reading about it, you're actually doing it, and you've got a faculty mentor that's helping you with that. So faculty that are active in research, they, they, this is not an exhaustive list. You could probably add to this, but I, off the top of my head, I would say, first of all, they ensure ongoing relevance in academic programs. Uh, they also establish the university's national reputation. Uh, 
uh, whether we like it or not, we, we will be known by the, by the knowledge that we create, by the publications we produce, by the grants that we receive, by the work that we, we uh, promulgate, uh, the inventions that we disclose. Uh, and that national reputation is incredibly important, not just for the institution, but actually for the students. The value of their degree ultimately will be linked uh, in perpetuity based on the reputation of, of Tennessee Tech. And so we want the value of that degree to escalate in value with time. And then the last one I have here is to engage students in that ultimate active learning experience. Uh, and, uh, and again, it's, you know, there's nothing like learning by doing, uh, you know, doing it with your hands. And that's something Tennessee Tech is known for. We're known for producing graduates that uh, actually do things with their hands and create things uh, and, and know how to get things done. And so uh, research is the way to do that. The money, uh, as indicated here, we were excited about reaching this goal of uh, this, this record this last year of $36.3 million in research activations. You know, that's, that's a wonderful thing. And, uh, but it's not an end in itself. That's an enabler. The money is an enabler to do all this other stuff, okay? Now, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that a lot of tremendous scholarship takes place on this campus that is not externally funded and doesn't necessarily need to be externally funded. Uh, and I don't, I don't want to overlook that at all. Faculty participate in scholarly work uh, on a lot of levels in a lot of different ways. But in the areas where funding is needed, and, and beneficial, and probably even more importantly, helps us establish that national level of competitiveness and reputation, it is important. And so we want to continue to push that because ultimately it allows us to impact more students and uh, create more opportunities for them in the long run. So, you know, we don't do research just for some esoteric reason. We do it because it makes a difference, because it makes a difference in the lives of students, and we're excited to do that. Uh, Addison also hit on uh, the growth issues on campus, and I think she did an excellent job of, of summarizing that. Um, you know, there's a lot uh, that we've gone through and a lot that we continue to, to juggle on campus. Uh, the students are fantastic, as well as the faculty and staff, about negotiating as we continue to improve the campus. Uh, here's just a few examples of projects that have, have actually been completed in the last five years. That's not counting the ones that are ongo still ongoing currently, but that's more than $200 million worth of capital improvements of things that have already been completed uh, in recent years. Uh, and so we continue to uh, negotiate those challenges as we make the campus uh, a better place in the future. Uh, fortunately, the the Peachtree Road project that has been mentioned is nearing completion. We'll be through with that uh, probably shortly after Christmas. Uh, and so by spring semester, that will alleviate a lot of the, the current uh, pressure on campus. But, but it is a, uh, you, you have to stay on your toes right now on campus because uh, it seems like every day there's a, there's a new challenge or a new pathway that you have to create. <clears throat> so we're trying to do a really good job of uh, communicating with the campus to keep everybody informed, try to give them as much heads up as possible about changes. Uh, sometimes that's difficult uh, because of the, the uh, uncertainties around a lot of construction projects, but uh, the, the, the contractors that we've been working with are, are absolutely wonderful to deal with and, uh, and being good partners, and so we're, we'll continue to, to do that. So uh, the current projects that we have going on, uh, parking transportation with the Peachtree Road project, and, and as I indicated, we, we continue to work with campus, have meetings with students and updates to campus. Uh, the Ashraf Islam Engineering Building is scheduled for completion in early April, uh, and so uh, excited about getting in that new building. Uh, in, in fact, we'll try to get the board through there, maybe, uh, maybe at the December meeting would be a good time to to get the board through there. Tucker Stadium and Football Operations Center are in the design phase at this point in time. We're hopeful to move the Tucker Stadium project 
into the construction phase at the end of this season. Uh, and then the uh, advanced construction and manufacturing engineering building is, is uh, near the end of design phase as well. So uh, we've got a lot more uh, things to look forward to. Uh, you know, where I would end up here with my comments is around community relations. And, and you know, we went through a lot of this this morning, and I, I want to really give a lot of credit to uh, Dr. Polk Johnson and her staff in student affairs uh, for really pushing this. I mean, she's had a lot of support from other parts of campus, but the uh, College Town kickoff event was fantastic. And... Uh, you know, all the feedback I've received from the community has been, has been absolutely tremendous. You know, we started talking about this a few years ago, uh, really pitching Cookville as Tennessee's college town. Uh, and it's, it's actually a perfect fit. I think it's a great descriptor for Cookville. Uh, and, and I think not only the campus is beginning to embrace that, but the community of Cookville is, is really embracing that in a big way. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, the students want the College Town kickoff to continue on an annual basis, but I'm telling you, I've gotten more requests from the community to make sure that it becomes an annual event, too. And, you know, the other comment that I think Addison made earlier was that, uh, and, and, and I hate this because too, too often we have students that are in their third or fourth year at Tech and say, oh, I had no idea that, that this restaurant was there or, you know, that that uh, that activity was available in town. And so this is really what we're trying to do to introduce students early on in their college experience about the wonderful place that uh, they are now residing for at least a few years. You know, when a student selects a, a university to attend, they're not only selecting the campus, they're selecting the community uh, because that's, that's home at least for a while. And so, you know, the more we can develop these relationships uh, between uh, Cookville and Putnam County and, uh, and everybody involved and the campus, the better off our students are. And, and I think the better value that we bring uh, to, to this part of the state as well. So it's exciting. Uh, as has been indicated, about 2,500 uh, folks, uh, probably half of which roughly were students, uh, showed up at the College Town kickoff. Uh, and again, it was it was a it was an opportunity to to have students mix with community members and learn the community to a greater extent. College Town weekends that's become an every weekend thing, and basically there were so many events uh, between uh, Cookville, Putnam County, and the campus that uh, student affairs could could actually lay out uh, opportunities for students to to hang around on weekends and stay active and involved. Uh, and that's going exceptionally well. Um, I, I am serving this year as the, uh, as Thomas has done in the past, uh, as chairman of the local chamber of commerce, uh, which is a great opportunity, and I appreciate it uh, tremendously. Uh, I've served on the chamber board for, gosh, I guess at least 10 years now. Uh, and so, but this is an opportunity to showcase to an even greater extent uh, how, what the relationships can be between the city and the campus. And that's really paying off in a number of ways, not only the things that have already been mentioned, uh, but for example, in, uh, when, when matters come up around, say, transportation or safety issues pertaining to campus, <clears throat> we, we have great cooperation with the city. Uh, met with the city manager recently about street crossings near campus, the safety of street crossings for students. And uh, they were more than helpful and uh, cooperative, and we have a uh, significant list of things that we think will make greater improvements for students uh, to negotiate the campus and the nearby communities. So, uh, you know, those things continue uh, and will be ultimately even more beneficial for students in the future. So, you know, I would say that uh, Cookville is Tennessee's college town, and uh, I think that I think Cookville's realizing what a great asset they have in Tennessee Tech University. So, a lot of great things are happening, but I would end with a really simple statement that the best is yet to come. There's a, there's a lot more great things that we can accomplish, 
and exciting to see where this will go in the future. So wings up. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. Dr. Olam, I wouldn't spend a lot of time worrying about why U.S. News and World Report said we were an A-plus school with B students. I figured out they're from Washington, D.C., and when they get finished with their work and head home, they have to go through Washington, D.C. with all of the stuff that we know is happening there. When we get through with our work in this community and we go home, we're, we're enjoying God's country here. So they probably said we're B students because we're rural. And you, you can't know a lot when you're in the rural community. You know, that's what they try to sell to us. But we know that these students, we've seen them today, have been A students. They're great kids. They're bringing a lot of value to our town. And I hope we're bringing the same amount of value to them, not just in tech, but it, from the Cookville community. And I think we are. It's a great, a great environment to go to college. Do you second that, Thomas? Yeah. It's, so it, it, if we had a chance to swap with anybody in Washington, I don't think you'd find many people down here that would swap, but you'd probably find several busloads in Washington that would be glad to come down here. So don't worry about what they say about us. <laughs> I think it helps a lot that we have a leadership out here at Tech that's also involved in the community. It really pulls the two together. And a lot of people appreciate that, Phil, that you're doing what you're doing. And also, you're continuing being a leader here long enough that the state knows you very well, and that helps us a lot. So we, I do think the best is yet to come. I think the best is yet to come for Tech and for Cookville, and one couldn't be without the other. <clears throat> so many people realize when they go to other towns, there's just a huge difference when there's not enough students and young people around to like to hear Tech. So even in churches, the young people sound good when they sing out in the community purchasing power, their employment, it just, it really makes our community look what it is. So uh, thanks for being involved in both places. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments for President Oldham? Excellent report, and to you, Ms. Doris, excellent report. Thank you both. I wanted to say, just before we close, I want to be sure I thank all the presenters this morning to the committees, all of the VPs and cabinet members who presented this morning. I thought your presentations were really top-notch, and not that they aren't always, but I just thought this today's were extra good. Um, Mr. Ray, do you have a report to give? I have one item. If you'll recall, um, at the June board meeting, you passed the Tech Farms Agreement with certain changes that we agreed to make. Those changes were made, and it was sent to the foundation board that approved it. And that document as revised is in diligent in your resources center under audit and business committee. So if you want to look at the signed, agreed, the version that you agreed upon and the foundation agreed upon with the revisions, it's there. That's the end of my report. Thank you. That was important. Um, I'll just report quickly that we our next meeting will be November the 30th, and then for the 2024 calendar year, our meetings will be March the 7th, June the 20th, September 26th, and December 5th. So hopefully you will all be able to join us for that. Were we ever able to get our streaming going? Guys, no. So we're, so we're still being recorded. To those of you who watched this recorded, we're sorry you didn't get to see us streaming. It was, I'm sure, a lot more interesting than it is in recording. But anyway, uh, thank you all for being here. I appreciate everybody's attention. These meetings are really important to the success of this institution, and I thank the board members for leaning into it. I will call us adjourned. I, I should ask, is there any other business to come before the board? Hearing that, I'll call us adjourned. Thank you all.